Hey everybody, it's Jonathan here. Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to photo stack your astrophotography. Photo stacking allows us to take a single shot like this 13 second exposure and stack it with other shots to create a longer equivalent exposure here like this 10 stack. To take these shots, I've been using my Canon R5 and 15 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens on a newer 65 inch carbon fiber tripod. So next off, I'm gonna show you how you can use photo pills to plan how long your exposure times are. So you can see here I inputted my Canon EOS R5, 15 millimeter lens and f2.8, and it's giving me an MPF rule of 14.56 as my maximum exposure time. In my case, uh, I set it to 13 seconds to keep it safe, and that'll lead to crisp stars. Now, if we're using a different focal length, like a 300 millimeter, we need to update our settings and recalculate. So you can see here, we've changed it to 5.6 as our aperture 300 millimeter, and we're getting an MPF rule of 1.24 seconds. So you can safely take about a one second exposure there on your camera. So it's something to keep in mind. So Quator actually has the ability to use raw files, but we're going to go into Lightroom and check out our files and actually export uh, TIFF files because I want to do some editing beforehand. So in my case, you can look at things like uh, streaks in the air for airplanes or satellites, remove them and kind of look at the different details on your images. I also ran some tests between 1600 ISO and 3200 ISO and a couple different exposure lengths to see what I liked best. So in Lightroom, we're kind of looking at the detail here. You can see the Milky Way looks pretty good. It's fairly sharp, but obviously the details aren't quite as bright in contrast as we'd like. And that's where photo stacking is really going to make those details pop out, reduce the noise and make the color contrast within the Milky Way look a lot better. So a good technique to have is to actually take a photo of the foreground at twilight and blend it in once you're done in Photoshop. In this case I haven't, so I'm going to use a gradient mask and try to balance out the bottom foreground there. And then there's an actual option called synchronize, which allows you to take a bunch of frames, edit one of them, and actually synchronize all of the edits to be the same across all images, which saves a ton of time. So we're going to do the edits we want, select all of the images here on the bottom slider, and then hit the synchronize button located on the bottom right there in Lightroom. And bam, everything's going to be synchronized for edits. Now that we've exported everything, we need to launch Sequator. So if you've never used this or you need to get it still, uh, it's a free tool that you can download. I'll have the link down in my description. So once you've downloaded and installed it, we're going to launch it and move on to our next steps. So in Sequator, there's basically a couple things you need to add. Um, so we're going to be adding in the images we're going to stack. So you see here, I've got a variety of different sets that I've been playing with. Um, so I'm just going to pick a, a brief selection for us to work on. And then um, you can also add in dark frames, which basically are called noise frames here. And what they do is actually uh, represent all the noise that the camera picks up when it's not picking up images. So you can take no those noise or dark frames by putting the cap on your camera and shooting a bunch of frames that way. So you get a black screen and uh, the camera will pick up all the different noise or hot pixels that the camera may have. And it'll be able to subtract that from the image. So you can see here, I'm just gonna select the five dark frames that I had and move on to the next steps. Now we're going to pick our save location and file name and then work on the different options that are going to be used to stack our image. There are various options you can use. You can try playing with it and experiment for which settings you actually prefer, but I'm going to show you the ones I like best. So we're going to have our mode on composition align stars, not star trail because that's something else. Um, sky region, you want to remove that from full area and uh, what we're going to do is actually fill it in. Um, so you're going to have to change it to a regular mask and draw in the sky. So you can see here, it actually tries to highlight the ground, but what we're going to do is use this green little area here and brush in the actual sky region that it's going to look at to stack. So uh, you can use your scroll wheel to change the size of the little brush there in case you need to. And if you make a mistake like I just did, there's a little reset button there on the bottom left and you can do it back over again. Um, so this actually helps it determine the area it needs to stack. And it's important that this mask is done properly. If you actually don't have any foreground, then you can use the full area mask and uh, not worry about that. Um, so describe some of the other options. I'd like to keep auto brightness on, high dynamic range on, remove dynamic noise on, um, re reduce distortion effects. So if you're using a wide angle lens, you're going to want to have that set to complex. 
So we're gonna uh, wanna click on that and change the option. Uh, if you're using a telephoto, then you're gonna wanna have it on tele mode. Uh, next off, reduce light pollution. Since we're in a city there, you can see there's some light pollution spots. So we're gonna wanna turn that option on. Um, then the other options we're pretty much gonna leave as is uh, and then begin stacking. So you can see here, it's gonna take a couple minutes. So I'm actually going to fast forward real quick so you don't actually have to watch this. So the result once it's stacked is gonna be a TIFF file, which then we're gonna take this TIFF file and import it into Lightroom to do our final touches. It's gonna bring out a lot more contrast in the Milky Way and make it more visible. And that's gonna be great for us to start editing. So we're gonna take the exported file, uh, which is gonna be a TIFF file. We're gonna load it back into Lightroom. I'm going to show you the comparison. So you can already see it's more pronounced. Uh, and we're going to do a quick comparison of the before and after. So you can see here, this is a before shot. Uh, Milky Way was pretty dull. And uh, now we're going to show you the TIFF file by comparison. And you can be able to see how the Milky Way is going to jump out at you. So you can see there, the stacking has really added more contrast between the two shots. Uh, the Milky Way, all the different stars are more visible and it's a great starting ground to be able to edit the photo. So we're importing it back into Lightroom now. We're gonna take a look. You should be able to see that there is a lot better detail or rather lower noise in the image in and around the sky. The Milky Way seems more pronounced. The contrast is better and uh, some of the nebulas and other uh, stars and that kind of thing are easier to see. Next, I want to show you a couple quick edits that I like to do. Uh, for starters, you're going to want to go into your develop settings there and uh, scroll down and try to remove some of the chromatic aberration. So that's the haloing that you sometimes see in photos, especially around stars and other objects as blue light around the edges. Uh, it's pretty easy to remove. There's this little option there on the right hand pane. Uh, so remove chromatic aberration. You can do this to any photo. Um, yeah, and it's a pretty easy fix. Uh, next off, we're going to kind of play with the sliders. Uh, that's sort of a personal taste. I like to use my clarity and dehaze quite a bit. So uh, pretty much play with your sliders. You can change your color tones, some other things like that, and uh, uh, see what you like best. I'm going to crop my image for 4x5 so it's fit for Instagram. I'll be posting this so you can take a look there, or maybe you've come from Instagram. Let me know what you think. Another thing to consider is you can change your white balance a little bit, uh, make it a little cooler or warmer uh, based on what you like to do. Some people like to add a little colorization to the Milky Way. Personally, I don't. Um, I kind of just like the contrast of it, so I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Other than that, I hope you've learned something new about uh, photo stacking. Give it a try. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Um, feel free to shoot me a message or leave a comment and I'll try to get to them as, as soon as I can. Yeah, and I appreciate any likes and shares you can offer and I hope you've learned something new. See you guys out there. Good luck and have fun.